Jesus, I want to thank You, Lord, for this day, for Your mercies, for Your grace, for Your long-suffering towards us. I pray, Lord Jesus, this morning that, Lord, we know that we have a pastor who has been waiting before Thee this week and for many, many, many years. So, Lord, today I pray that You would give him quiet rest, comfort sweet, and a full release as he shares with us the Word of God. I pray, Lord Jesus, that You would anoint him. Oh God, that you would, Lord, as he's been waiting, Lord, you've been speaking to him, Lord Jesus, preparing uh, food for us here in this place and those who are listening on the phone. And uh, Lord, I pray, Lord Jesus, you'd give him full release today of that, of that message that's for us today and for the ones listening across this country. I pray, Lord Jesus, you'd be with them. I pray, Lord, as he shares with us and reviews what God has shown him that, Lord, that you would give him the sweet release as he goes into the service there in yes. Texas, Lord, today. Yes. Lord Jesus, that you would release what he has to share yes. and that the people there would be able to hear yes. and that we'd be able to hear yes. and heed yes. and then go out different yes. from this place, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning, Pastor. Good morning. Praise the Lord. I'm feeding off the anointing of the voices of uh, everybody spoke uh, spoken thus far. It, it fed me, and I'm very thankful. And I, I, I've never heard of the phrase, give him a release. Mm -hmm. But that's in my mind, and uh, that would be good. Yes. Uh, not only if I'm speaking, we're on our way, by the way, to uh, a new place, uh, a country church. In fact, uh, Don Swartner is going to sing this morning, uh, uh, the church in the Wildwood, and that's what it is, seven miles below where we used to meet, and... Uh, we're we're meeting in a different place now. Uh, let me uh, let me give at least a couple of verses. Uh, an old song I think all of you know, and it goes like this: There's a church in the valley by the wildwood, no lovelier spot in the day. No place is so dear to my childhood as the little brown church in the vale. Oh, come, 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 come to the church in the wildwood. Oh, come to the church in the vale. No spot is so dear to my childhood as the little brown church in the veil. Now William Pitts wrote that out somewhere in Iowa, uh, the state, and he came up this beautiful valley. There's no church there, but he thought it'd be nice to have a church here. Lo and behold, five he went home and wrote this song. Five years later, about when he when he was uh, with, with her or going to her, his new bride. I think he was with her. He came upon this valley again, and lo and behold, there was a little brown church in the dale or the vale. <laughs> and so he saw. He had a vision, he wrote about it, and that vision came to pass some years later. <laughs> oh, come to the church in the wild wood, to the trees where the wild flowers bloom, where the parting hymn will be chanted. We will be by the side of the tomb. How sweet on a clear Sunday morning to list to the clear ringing bell. By the way, we have a bell in this uh, church. <laughs> its tones so sweetly are calling. Oh, come.
come to the church in the vale, from the church in the valley by the wild wood, when day fades away into the night, I would fain from this spot of my childhood wing my way to the mansions of light. Oh, come, 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 come to the church in the wildwood. Oh, come to the church in the veil. No spot is so dear to my childhood. Wing my way. Let's see. Child, as the little brown church in the veil. We're headed for that church. And uh, we'll be there. My wife came out a little earlier. You hear the sounds of car. Because she got in about 920. It's uh, seven or eight miles farther than the place where we used to worship. Anyway, let's turn to Mark. Uh, 7, and beginning with the 24th verse, uh, Jesus left that place, he, he left Galilee, uh, John the Baptist had been killed, and uh, Antipas was after him, and his time was not yet, it was not yet to be captured and to be crucified or killed, and so Jesus left that place and went to the vicinity of Tyre, he entered a house and did not want anyone to know it, yet he could not keep his presence secret. In fact, as soon as she heard about him, a woman whose little daughter was possessed by an impure spirit, that's a demonic spirit, came and fell at his feet. Uh, Another person that fell at his feet, I believe, was Jairus, uh, a, a Gentile. Uh, anyway, she fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek, born in Syrian Phoenicia. She begged Jesus to drive the demon out of her daughter. Now, tradition tells us that her name was Justa. J-U-S-T-A, and her daughter's name was Bernice. As the gospel spread to the Greeks, the Greeks were far more interested in detail. Now the Jewish people, the Hebrew children, were not like so much like that, but they wanted to know her name, so tradition kept it. Justa and Bernice. And so she fell at his feet. Now, I want to make my first point in this first paragraph. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know it, yet he could not keep his presence secret. Listen, according to that same account in uh, Matthew, um, when she questions him, or he says this in the Matthew, Matthew account, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. Listen, he didn't know this was going to take place. He's 31, maybe two years old at this point, probably 31. But, and he didn't begin his ministry until 30 years of age. We learned that from Luke. And, and the, the thing he knew for sure was his father said to him, People only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now, in John we read, For God so loved the world. And what, what he's doing to Jesus here is teaching him. Uh, I want to point out to you that Philippians says, Paul wrote this about Jesus. In your relationship with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in the very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. He says in another place, in John, I say only what my Father tells me to say, and do only what my 
Father has shown me to do. That's in John somewhere. All right. I'm going to make that point. Rather, he made himself nothing. He had to learn just like we had to learn. Have to learn. By taking the very nature of a servant. I Actually, I think the Greek says slave. Being made in a human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself. He became obedient to death, even death on the cross. So he knew he was to find a place of rest, perhaps get away from Antipas who sought to kill him because he thought John the Baptist would come back alive in his ministry. But Hebrews tells us this, Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize or empathize with our weaknesses. But we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are. See, it's tested in every way. We have to learn our ABCs. There's no royal road uh, to geomet geometry. You put it said, and uh, there's no royal word to adult uh, way to adult it. Jesus had to come up just like we have. In terms of his mission, he didn't even realize when this took place that he that God was showing him that a, a little glimpse because he kept true and went all the way to the cross with ministering primarily to. Uh, the ch children of Israel. But we have one who has been tested, tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. That's the first point I want to make. All right. The woman was a Greek, fell at his feet, born in Syrian Phoenicia. She begged Jesus to drive the demon out of her daughter. I've thought about that. But Lord, what in the world was the background? How did this demon get in this daughter? And uh, I can't answer that, but she had a demon spirit and mother knew it. Now, earlier in Mark, it says that Jesus' ministry was noised abroad, I think the third chapter, even to Tyra and Sidon. So they had, Sidon, they had heard of him. Uh, perhaps she came down to see him, but uh, didn't approach him until he came to her area. Sent by the Lord himself, by God, who was going to give him a glimpse of a ministry that was going to go to the Gentiles as well as to the children of Israel. And so she begged Jesus to drive the demon out of her daughter. Jesus answers, first, now notice that word first, let the children eat all they want, he told her. Then he gave her something harder, for it is not right to take the children's bread, toss it to the dogs, okay? Paul says, in Romans 1, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. You follow Paul uh, on this first missionary journey, uh, the Jewish people, those in the synagogue, wouldn't listen to him. And he said, I'm going to take it to the Gentile. He already had word. And that's the first missionary journey. But he said, first to the Hebrew children and then everybody else. Now, are you still with me? Yes, sir. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, because I'll be checking another place. <laughs> We're almost to the road six miles up from the church. So I wanted to check with you. All right, for it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dog. I know uh, the actual word is little puppies, but uh, she could.
could have been offended, yeah. and she wasn't. Any, most any Gentile would be offended because the Hebrew children at that time considered us dogs, and, and that for good reason. We were a wild bunch. Uh, Paul explains in the letter to Ephesians how God bridged the gap and brought us in. Uh, nevertheless, she could have been offended. <laughs> but she says this, Lord, she replied, even the dogs or the little puppies under the table eat the children's crumbs. <laughs> well, now, in, in Matthew, where this account, uh, <laughs> I love it because he said it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Now, listen to this. Yes, it is, Lord. Wow. Whoa. She's arguing with Jesus here. In the right spirit. Yes, it is, Lord, she said. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Wow. That so provoked Jesus. And then he told her, for such a reply, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. Now, how, how easily we are offended, especially under circumstances like this, if we, if we consider even providential that the Lord's putting us <clears throat> in second place or third place or, or, uh, or as characteristically the Jewish people felt that way, even though they were called to bring light, bring light to the Gentiles. Jesus just gives her that. Now, how have we replied? Do you realize, folks, that if we reply in humility, even arguing with the Lord, that our reply will leave, will loose the demons from our children? How, how, how often have we replied in a way that we should not have? Not humbly, like this. She argues with Jesus. She said, yes, it is. The question, she gives him the reason. Even the little puppies eat the crumbs under the table. Boy, that provokes Jesus. And then he told her, for such a reply, you may go. The demon has left. I went down through Sidon, down to the Sea of Galilee, and into the region of the capital of the Gentile territory, learning all the while he was following his, his father's orders. There's yeah. some people to him, a man who was deaf. He could hardly tell Jesus to place his hand on him. Are you, are you still listening to me? Yes, yes sir. sir. Okay. After he took him aside, away from the crowd, Jesus put his fingers into the man's ears. Then he spit and kissed the man's tongue. He looked up to heaven and with a deep sigh said to him, Ephrathah, which means be open. At this, the man's ears were open, his tongue was loosened, and began to speak plainly. Jesus commanded them not to tell anyone. But the more he did so, the more they kept talking about it. And I want to, I want to say this. Listen, when Jesus tells us to be quiet, be quiet. Mm -hmm. In another place, he told them to be quiet. They were quiet, and he not. And then he cut off his ministry into the village and towns. Mm -hmm. People had to come out to the wilderness to see him. What would have been done? Uh, had they obeyed Jesus. Um, Jesus commanded them not to tell anyone. But the more he did so, the more they kept talking about it. People were overwhelmed with amazement. And they said a good thing. But they didn't do the right thing. They said he has done everything well. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. Well, um, my question is, uh, do we hear what Jesus is saying? I heard Brother M say, in anticipation of uh, services with him, don't say we're going to have great services. Mm -hmm. Don't 
say we're going to have miracles and healing. One time we went into Kentucky and uh, ordinarily the Holy Spirit would be working and moving wonderfully. And we noticed there wasn't any, uh, you know, uh, activity like usually we experienced uh, under Brother Him. And then I said to Brother Morgan when I got home, or after the second service, I said, Brother Morgan, why is it that we're not experiencing what we usually experience under Brother Him? He said, he opened the paper, and he said, see this? And there was a big advertisement. The pastor didn't know that there's a big advertisement. It said, revival services, come and see the miracles and see the power of God in healing and so on and so forth. <laughs> we had two or three services, and the, 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 uh, who, who came for that reason were gone. A third or fourth night, Jesus began to work. And so it behooves us to do what Jesus says. A lot of people are waiting for us to be quiet uh, or to speak whatever he says we're supposed to do. Jesus, this is the last thing that I have. Thank you for moving us to a new place and for allowing me to contact the gathering and the people of various states um, through Bobby's phone. We're thankful. We'll check this out later and work it out. But, oh, Father, Oh, how often have we not said the right thing? If we had, the demons would have been gone. We were offended instead. And then when he tells us to be quiet after he worked so wonderfully, and he said Jesus kept on telling them to be quiet, they talked all the more. In another place, we read that it kept him from doing what he would have done. It, it blocked things. So, Father, help us, we pray, as we look at this passage, a passage that history tells us is just uh, in Bernice, a passage where a woman could have been offended but knelt at his feet and said, Jesus, help me. And he said, I'm not called only to the house of Israel. And then he said in Mark here, he said, the words that we just heard. It's not right. He said, first, the children must be fed. Not right to give the children the meat, of the bread to, to the dogs. She said, oh, yes, it is. Because even the dogs feed under the table from the crumbs. What a glorious crumb. What wonderful things we can turn loose if we will humble ourselves and reply in such a way and also don't grasp at whatever profession we're disciples of Christ but don't grasp at of the glorious things that go with it but humbly stay at Jesus feet and have him teach us because some people who've been on the way here for a while they're the most trouble in a congregation and we pray for deliverance, pray for help, we pray for mercy. And that, with that, we pray in Jesus' name. And thank you, Lord, for hearing our cry today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, thank, I'm thankful you was able to get back with us, Pastor. We're praying, <laughs> we're praying we'll for... We'll figure this out. Yes, sir. And we'll be praying God will help you there as you as you go, that uh, we'll be able to, that Jesus will be there with you. I know he is, and that he'll help Praise you. The Lord. Praise the Lord. We'll, we'll figure this out, how to do it, and thank you for your patience, all of you in the different states. Thank you for the, your patience. We're, we're working, we're here, because we couldn't be at the other place after 30 years. We're here. and how Don found this place it must have been he knew about it from younger life and when he was younger but it's a sweet place and it's like the church in the wildwood and uh, we'll, we'll
we'll be talking to you as we figure out how to do this. Yes. Thank you, and we love you. We love, you. love you. Bye for a while. Bye. Bye.